Hi guys, welcome to Simple Sips. Um, we have a very special episode here today. We have our special guest, Bobby Zahn. Um, those of you who know him in the past as BZ, done some awesome tastings with us. Um, we have a great lineup of some sparkling wines for the holidays that Bobby and I have put together. Um, we're just gonna kinda briefly talk over these. It's, it's a really good lineup, and um, the first three that you'll see here are all under $20. And that's amazing. And they'll and just kind of go up from there. Um, so, Bobby, welcome. Great. Thank you. Thanks, David. Thanks for having me. <laughs> this is great. Um, before we even start, um, I just want to thank you for having me. Of course. And it's great to see the second generation merging in with um, the rest of the family with um, Tina and Sam. Awesome. Good job, bro. Thank you. All right. Thanks. So, um, sparkling wines. There's a lot of misnomers and a lot of things misunderstood on them. I'm kind of going to break some fallacies and Let's talk a little briefly about the different marks today. One of the things I'm going to keep emphasizing today, the most important aspect, we only, most Americans only think of sparkling wine celebratory, but in most cases they are the best beverage you can have with the widest array of foods. So it's great for celebration, anniversary, birthday, my divorce went through, whatever you want to celebrate, but on a serious note, it is more about how they pair so well with so many different types of cuisine, especially heading into the holidays. So let's start. I'm kind of going to go this order for all the people out there. And uh, I want to start with a deli delicious cava, which is Spanish sparkling wine. Okay? So cava is method champ. Matter of fact, all six wines on the table are method champ and wine, which means they're made in the champagne method adding yeast products to make it go through the secondary fermentation in the bottle, and then age to get more complexity. So we're basically tasting almost all champagnes, but just not always from France. Correct. Yep. Which we'll talk about uh, what true champagne is at the end with the last two. So Carver is made in Penedès, um, right outside of the beautiful, really cool city of Barcelona. Um, hopefully we'll all be traveling there very soon. That's so. Segura Viudas is a, is a great sparkling wine house. Um, what you'll be tasting, what I'm showcasing, and David, is their um, top of the line, their, Her their Heredat, which is their Tete de Cuvée. You're going to hear me mention that term throughout the tasting also. Tete de Cuvée means top blend, the best that the house can produce. Okay, so the most important grape for cava is uh, uh, Macabeo. You might talk later about uh, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, Pinot Minet, but in this case, it's a different grape variety, Macabeo. So all the wines on the table are Brut, B-I-U-T. You might see that term always when you're looking at sparkling wines, and you might see the term extra dry. Your first assumption will be extra dry is drier than Brut. That is not true. Brut is the top quality and is the driest of all sparkling wines. Everything we're tasting today is brute. So that's one aspect that I want you guys to all remember. Okay, so with Segura Viudas, um, Heredad, like I was mentioning, it's a top wine, fairly rich and complex. It's legally, it has to only be aged 15 months. This is aged 30 months before being released. Wow. Then an additional three months in the bottle. It's gonna to be toasty, creamy, viscousy. It's gonna have a lot of weight a lot of substance to it. Great with seafood as an aperitif, but even works fantastic. Spain is really famous for the cured hams and cured meats. Works great. So one of the things, it has high acidity, cuts to the saltiness of your cured hams, any pork dish. This will tie in perfect with any pork. Actually go great with Thanksgiving too with the bird. So I think that's something. Bone dry. Fairly rich is the best way I describe this. This cava. Great value overall. Done in my opinion. Perfect on the holiday table. The beautiful package. Yeah. So this, sure. is, this is the top wine from uh, Segura Reviews. All right. So as we go down the line, we talk about domestic sparklings. Um, I've known David for now about ten years, and I've known his father Sam and his aunt Tina for. 35 years. So when I started selling wine, I've had the same job for 39 years. This is basically when dinosaurs are walking the face of the earth. 
Um, the one wine, there were two wines which, when you thought of domestic, they didn't really compare to what was coming out of, in this case, France. One was Pinot Noir. Um, they were planting it in the wrong place. They were planting it in hot microclimates. And the other was sparkling wines. If you could go back in a time capsule 30 years ago, the sparkling wines from America were just okay, led by Schramsberg, led by Domenici and Don. They were good, but... Big houses. Yep, they weren't really refined yet. They didn't have the finesse. Well, in the last, 20, in the last 10 years and five years, the ascension of sparkling wines in America has been truly incredible. Uh, one of the things in the 1970s, the famous champagne house of G.H. Mum bought property in Napa Valley, the northern part of Napa. Okay, and decided to produce a sparkling wine. Now it's not called champagne, even though it's owned by the champagne house of G.H. Mum, because it's not produced in the area of champagne in France. Okay, it is method champenois. Again, aged, fermented, and aged in the bottle. So same, same style as champagne, but we're in California. Correct. So you have a much warmer climate. So you're going to see even more forward fruit. So our mums makes a wide variety of marks. We're going to talk about two of them. We're going to talk about the mums Cuvée Napa root. Okay. So that is the three, that is derived from the three crepes which Champagne France is famous for. Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and a great, some of you might not have heard, heard of before, Pinot Minet, um, another red grape. That kind of gives it the spiciness, a little more texture body. Okay, so this wine is also, again, a brew. Like I said, they all are uh, dry. Going to get a lot of finesse to it. You're going to start to get that richer California fruit here. Um, age 21 months before being released, so you also get some more complexity, some more depth to it. Good amount of time. Yeah, so you're gonna. This one I would tie up, tie in with as an aperitif, or as with any seafood. Um, I would definitely go with anything spicy. I might go with the cava. Here I would tie the mums cuvée napa root in with any seafood. Perfect. One of the other marks they're famous for, which is getting amazing accolades, is the Mun, mums cuvée napa root rosé. Here. It is really heavy in Pinot Noir, hence you're going to get the color because of the skin contact, the maceration of the Pinot Noir grape. Um, you're going to have more texture, more weight. You get a beautiful red cherry strawberry fruit here. You're just going to get more, there's a little more um, depth to the product, a little more forward fruit, you're going to get to it. This I would really tie in, but any rosé, sparkling wine, tie in with fuller foods, I would tie this in with salmon, tie this in with tuna, or any bird. This would go great on the Thanksgiving table with the turkey, or even if you want to tie it in with pork dishes, dynamite with duck. If anyone's into making a duck preparation, this would go perfect. Now I'm hungry. Yeah, David and I are starving. <laughs> Tina, make us some duck. <laughs> um, it is also a fruit, so why you have more forward fruit, you are going to get richer because of the um, domination, excuse me, Pinot Noir dominating the cuvee. You definitely need to get more upfront cherry fruit to it. And I, and I would agree with that 100%. The rosé is just always, yeah. they, if they pop. Absolutely, they David. Pop. If anyone's um, interested in scores, um, both of the Mums Cuvee Napa products, these marks have received 91 points from the wine enthusiasts. And a couple of years ago, the Mums Cuvee Napa rosé was in the Wine Spectator Top 100 Wines of the World. So the accolades are truly amazing. It's huge. All right, so let's go to a really cool, interesting product. One of a personal favorite, Rotorer Estate. Okay, I'm kind of going to talk about this one and the next wine together, the, the Rotorer Brut Premier. So Rotorer Estate is owned by the famous champagne house, Louis Rotorer. To me, one of the great champagne marks on the planet. Family owned still since, since their inception in 1776. Same people that make Cristal. Correct. Correct. Um, where's the, Tina, where's the Cristal? Uh, anyway, so, okay. So the area of champagne is maxed out, okay? You can buy property in Champagne, France. You better be... Bill Gates. It's so expensive. And the area 
It's a designated area. Okay, you can, cannot enlarge it. If you plant two grapes outside of Champagne and bottle it, you cannot call your product Champagne. So Rotora, starting in 1981, instead of going to Sonoma, instead of going to Napa, they went to a cooler climate area, the Anderson Valley in Mendocino. It's much similar weather-wise to Champagne region of France. Okay, and they started to produce an amazing product, Rotora Estate Brew. It's going to be much more similar in style to French Champagne. Due to the cool climate, there's higher acidity, which true French Champagne has. There's more finesse. They utilize two of the three grapes of Champagne in here, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. Anderson Valley, if people aren't familiar, is a subregion of Mendocino. Anderson Valley is really tiny. The whole area is 2,700 acres. And to put it into perspective, the people, I'm sure a lot of people have been up to Napa Valley. Stag's Leap is bigger than that. Um, Caneros is about three times the size of it. Rutherford's 6,000 acres. You can see how tiny Anderson Valley is. So Anderson Valley gets ocean breezes about 45 minutes away in the Pacific Ocean. Breezes come in at night. They provide almost a blanket. They really keep it cool. Bring it down to like in the 40s many nights. You really need that sweatshirt. Like the main, like the main coast, this keeps the high acidity in wines. The other part about Rotorua Estate, everything comes from their property. They do not purchase any grapes. They have the expertise of Rotorua. The winemaker of Rotorua will come in and help the final blending of their property in the Anderson Valley. Um, it also has a little bit of oak aging, similar to the Rotorua Brut Premier, and they have reserve wines. They put in about 5% of older wines. This provides more depth, more texture, yeah. more body, more richness. Mm -hmm. This is an incredible product for the money. I th believe this is under $25? Under 25 That is an amazing sparkling wine, something I would recommend highly. Every year when the Wine Spectator or the Wine Advocate does their review, Rotary State is usually the number one or number two sparkling wine. It's going to be closer to true champagne than the California, than the other California style. It's just a remarkable product. Um, any comments before we move on to French champagnes? I, no, I think you hit the nail right on the head because I mean, year after year, when I taste the Rotor Estate, usually buy at least one or two bottles a year, the, the quality and the consistency is there every year, it really is. Um, the latest review from the Wine Advocate, 93 points on this, which is incredible for California spot than wine. Let me go back to food pairings for a second. One of the interesting things when you visit um, sparkling wine houses or champagne, we only, again, only think of champagne in terms of celebratory, or maybe with caviar or something like that. It's nice, I wish I had some caviar right now. But the other thing that's is really, if you, if you realize, I keep referring back to different types of cuisine. Good sparkling wines and champagne has high acidity want. So it works perfect with spicy foods. You want the best combination, the best wine combination with Indian food, Thai food, fusion cuisine, spot, really good sparkling wines. Mm -hmm. The high acid will cut through the spice. The other thing which works real good with rich foods, one combination that Mums does when you come to visit, they give you popcorn and french fries, something you wouldn't expect. So you have something buttery with the popcorn, you have something temporary-ish with the french fries, and sparkling wine works incredible with it. The one you might think in terms of oysters or caviar. Outside of red meat, I think sparkling wines could be your best combination. You could, you could start with different marks at the beginning of the meal and go all the way through. All right, so let's go into true champagne. Champagne is a region in France. Okay, in order to be used as designation, and all the grapes have to come from the Champagne region. They do make some still wines. They're okay, but what they do better than any other place in the world is make sparkling wine. So we'll talk about the Champagne House of Louis Rotorua. As I referred to earlier, 
It dates back to 1776, its inception. Voto is family owned. They have no outside investors. They own more Grand Cru property in Champagne than any other producer. They're actually very tiny. Uh, people know one of the famous Bollinger, um, that James Bond drinks. Roto is about 30% the size of them. So they're actually pretty small. They got obviously famous for the Tete de Cuvée, the Grand Marc Cristal. Okay, Rotera, which goes into um, the Brut Premier, they own most of the property. They purchase a little of the grapes, but 90% is from their own property. It is a blend of three grapes, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, 40% of each, and 20% Pinot Noir. The other thing which Rotor is tending to do, which is really important now, they're leading the way with biodynamic farming. Until about 15 years ago, Champagne region was kind of a, not the best thing with um, the environment. They were cutting corners, and Champagne was kind of the last region to be concerned with organic and biodynamic farming. Rotary has led the way. As a matter of fact, Cristal, the new vintage, has been certified biodynamic. So here, you're going to get longer aging. You're going to have more oak aging. There's 10% oak aging. You're going to have 15% reserve wines in this. And there's a small percentage of 20-year-old reserve wine in this. So the wine is toasty, rich, complex. It has amazing finesse and pinpoint precision. This would go incredible with a really complex seafood. I've even worked with, if you want to do something with some spice, it's just a, an amazing, amazing product. Rotary to me is truly one of the great champagne firms. Probably one of my most recommended. It's under $45 a bottle, and it's for that price point, you're getting a truly remarkable it's something I would really recommend highly. Uh, the other thing which Rotary is doing, the constantly, even though the house goes back, like I said, to the 1700s, they're probably the most innovative house. They're constantly working with taking innovation and combining it with tradition. A lot of their vineyards are um, actually, they utilize a few horses. So they believe that the treading of the horses is a natural way to kind of till the earth. So Pretty amazing firm. If you have a chance to visit, it's something I would highly recommend. Um, the last champagne we're going to talk about is uh, a big personal favorite, Laurent Perrier Rosé, Brut Rosé. Okay, when you open up this beautiful gift box, you're going to see a unique bottle. It is um, a little different than the other bottles on the table. It's a little wider. This is a replica of a bottle they found from the 1700s. Laurent Perrier, similar to Rhoda, is family owned. It's, also, it's owned by two sisters, Stephanie and Alexandra. The rose is 100% Pinot Noir. Okay? It's free run juice, then it goes to a little a maceration for about three days. What's unique here, a lot of champagne houses will add a little still red wine to control the color. Laurent Perrier does not do this. It's the old traditional way of doing that. Basically, so there's no still red wine in this. So when you purchase multiple bottles, you might see a little variation in color, but that's the way they want it. They want it done the specific way. It's the world's largest selling rosé champagne. They control the 20% of the market. Yeah, it's incredible. I did not know that. That's yeah. I mean, it, it, that testifies to the quality. It's the quality just amazing. Itself, so. uh, the other thing I do want to mention, I started to talk about terms which I'm not sure if people are familiar with called Grand Cru. There are certain vineyard sites in Champagne which are Grand Cru and Premier Cru. Laurent Perry for the Rosé only uses Grand Cru vineyards, the best of the best. The vineyards that they own and utilize to make this product are rated 100%, which is the top of the top. So here we just have an amazing array of sparkling wines, Cava, Two California sparkling wines for Napa, which accentuate the fruit. The Rotary Estate, which kind of goes, I would say, closer to a champagne style. Two great houses of champagne, Louis Rotary, which goes back to the 1700s, and Laurent Perrier, owned by two wonderful sisters, which goes back to the 1800s. But again, 
still all done in the champagne method. The method chop and lock. Please don't think of sparkling wines and champagne, just celebratory. Please utilize this with your cuisine during the holidays or your cuisine throughout the year. Um, we all to get that Chardonnay or Sauvignon Blanc to tie in with your seafood, wonderful seafood dinners. This will go even much better with, with most seafood preparations. So again, I can't emphasize enough to tie in sparkling wines with a wide variety of cuisines. The most important thing, I wish everybody have a great holiday season, to be healthy, and hopefully you can enjoy small gatherings with your family and friends. Thank you. Bobby, thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers, everybody.